Take this, Paul Dobbs. I am Missouri too. Poor old Johnny was a great hunter. Yeah, he was ten years ago. Ah, oh, Mr. Dobbs. Huh? What about that money you owe me? That's all right. I'll see you next week. It better be next week. Morning, Mr. Dobson. What do you suppose he meant? Kayanga, Bay Rashid, west a hundred miles. He couldn't have found Kayanga. Why not? He's often talked about it. Come to think of it, he's one of the few people in the country who really believed in it. Jim, suppose he were right. We could make our fortune. Would well, you think it's worth following up? Of course I do. All we need is a wagon. <laughs> oh, nobody's going to stake us to that kind of money. They don't have to. I've been thinking there's a party of settlers going out of the Maasai next month, a man called Meacham, Thomas Meacham, I think. I understand that he's having some trouble getting hunters. Well, it's time we did a job anyway. It's certainly time we cleared out of here. Jim, if things work out right, this could be the last job you ever have to do. Where do we find Meacham? Oh, he's in Mombasa somewhere. He's a saddle maker or something. I never heard of settlers going to the Maasai before. Well, that's not our worry. in that wagon, Miss Leacham, you'd be out of the sun. Thank you very much, but I really don't think there's any need. Well, you won't find this a very comfortable way of traveling. The least a wagon can do for you is give you a bit of shade. That happens to be perfectly true. But I've been traveling in ox wagons since I was five years old, so I think I ought to know a little about it. Sorry, I didn't know. It just so happens I was born in this country. I can ride a horse and I'm an expert shot. I'd even drive one of these teams if I had to. Well, I wonder what your father hired me for. Well, I'm sure it wasn't to stop me getting sunstroke. Oh, Mr. Dobson! Hey. Mr. Hey. Dobson! Hey. Mr. Dobson, hey. are we traveling upwind? Oh, uh, yeah. I'll trouble you to address me as ma'am. Hey. Take your hat off. Hey, come on. Mend it, mend it, mend it. Are there any buffalo on the other side of that hill? Any elephants? Rhino? Don't you think you ought to go and take a look? Certainly, Marv. It'll make you feel any easier. You might take your brother along with you. Don't know what you both think you're getting paid for. Hey! At one time, I'll be glad of a rhino's company. <laughs> That's certainly quite a collection we got with us this time, isn't it? I wonder if they know what they're doing, going off into the blue like this with a plow and a few sacks of seed. They're going where no one's gone before. Back home, Meacham was just a saddle maker. Now there will be someone important, a big landowner. That's until the Maasai burn his crops and steal his cattle. Hey! You bet me. Twenty rupees. Oh. Ah. That was quite a 
quite a bit. You're getting pretty sure of yourself. You know I missed him the first time? Yeah, sure, you held your aim too long. You mean I don't trust my judgment anymore? An anxious hunter is a dead hunter. That's the old saying, isn't it? The first thing Johnny taught us, remember the day we went to see him and said we wanted to be hunters? You think too much about Johnny. Now that he's dead, one of us has to do the thinking. If you want to spend another ten years of this game, or finish up the way he did. Johnny ought to have known better. He was never any good in his own. He always had to have a second rifle. If he didn't have one, he should have kept himself out of trouble. How long can a hunter keep out of trouble? Like you get to be 50, you've done 30 years in the bush. One of two things is going to happen to you. Either you finish up the way Johnny did, or else you play it safe and stay home in Mombasa. Going around the bars, telling a few tall stories, and hoping someone will lend you a few rupees or stand you a drink. Good thing Johnny left us something in his will. Mm. Pity we didn't have a bit more to go on than a few words in this scrap of paper. Oh, we'll make out. With a bit of luck. Thomas Meacham's wagons. <laughs> They'll make out, all right. Come on, come on. <laughs> no, put those cattle in the other bomber. Huh? You done a lot of shooting? No, not very much. If you want a bit of practice, why don't come out with me tomorrow? There's plenty of good shooting around here. Well, thanks very much, Mr. Dobson. You'll take good care of him, won't you? Don't worry, he'll come back all right. Mummy, is this all right? I'll be with you in a minute, Suzanne. Right now, I've got to help Uncle Tom. Your father seems to be a jack of all trades, Miss Meacham. Well, it may be some time before we can boast of a doctor in the Marseille. Excuse me. How much do you know of him? Who? The Maasai? Mm-hmm. Enough. People call them the Lion Men. Tall warriors with ten-foot spears. I've heard it said they rule over all the tribes east of Lake Victoria. You think we're very foolhardy, don't you? Well, there's plenty of good land within a hundred miles of Mombasa. Do you think we don't know that, Mr. Dobson? Well, just a minute, Captain. We're not going to colonize this country by sitting on the shores of the Indian Ocean. No, sir. You may not have noticed it, but things are changing out here. Look at the way the Germans are moving in. Hundreds of them every year. We're going to lose this race if we're not careful. Suppose that wouldn't mean much to a hunter. In any case, my boy, that's why they want people to go out west. And make peace with the Maasai. We'd have to make peace with the natives wherever we go. And the Maasai are worth talking to. If we once get them on our side, we could open up the whole frontier. Pity we didn't think about it ten years ago. A lot of very valuable lives might have been saved. What do you mean by that last bit? There was a massacre. I was only a child at the time. My mother was killed, and my uncle, Aunt Catherine's husband. Our farm was burned down. The Johnsons were the same. We've worked ten years to make a new start. And you're not afraid the same thing might happen again? The Maasai aren't exactly famous for their hospitality, you know. Well, it was different before. What happened wasn't really the natives' fault. How? There was a feud about the game preserves. The natives went out and set fire to some bushland. I think they meant to drive the game away. And then one night, some of the white men went out and poisoned all the water holes around the village. They'd been drinking. That's what started it.
<laughs> Jim, take a look at that. Meacham's brand new, only made this year. I'll take a look at Johnny's note. It's Kayanga, Jim. That valley must be Kayanga. There's nothing else it could be. Three peaks west of Beirashi. You're right. Yeah, the trouble is Meacham's heading north. We go along the Galana River, we don't even touch Beirashi. I thought the idea was to look for Kayanga on the way back. Got to see it now, Jim. I've got to make sure. If Kayanga really exists, we've got no time to lose. You mean you'd risk the frontier at Beresheed with this convoy? Oh, why not? Wagons have been through there before. But what about Meacham? Ah, uh, that's easy. Say I found some dead cows. Cattle plague. We'll have to make a detour. We'll take the other route south of Kikindu. You think it's wise? Wise? Do you know what this is worth to us? Could be worth quite a deal if Johnny happens to be right. What do you mean, right? Well, until we saw his note, we never thought Kayanga was any more than a legend. <laughs> we had the Arabs talking about it when we were kids. Kayanga, the secret meeting place of the elephants. For one week, once a year, the elephants come to the valley of Kayanga. Johnny saw them. He must have done. He saw something. Trucks, maybe. We don't know if you really saw the herds. I think he did. I think he got there at exactly the right time, about the beginning of the rains, and that's when we're gonna get there. We'll take Meacham wherever he wants to go, and we'll bring his wagon back for him. An empty wagon, eight oxen. Do you know how much ivory that would carry? About 5,000 pounds worth. What are you gonna do, build yourself a big house in Kalindi? I don't much care as long as I get out of this. You've got it, haven't you? Johnny called it bush fever. Yeah, and that's just how he felt. Things he hated. Smell of sweat. Ochre. Wet, cold canvas on an early morning. Now you've wasted your life. Sake of a few trophies on the barroom wall. Uh, tell you, Jim. Meet him or no meet him. This is gonna be my last trip into the bush. Want to argue about it? <clears throat> Would you listen to me if I did? Get that wagon round. We're turning south. What's the matter? Cattle plague. We've got to get out of this. Better be getting back, or Mrs. Johnson will be wondering where you are. Wanna, Timba! Get to those horses. Watch it. Trouble, we're all right. What brought you over? Oh, more trouble. There's cattle break in this area. Meacham's heading south. I've come to pitch him back. That's too bad. All right, let's get going. Work like a charm. Again, south of Kikindu. Twenty days from now, we'll be in Bear Ashid. Come on.
on the cattle there. Come Mr. on. Doctor, hey, Doctor, huh? going out to get some game, or do we eat hard tack tonight? Hey, Jim. Take care of that, will you? Come on, get that bomber built. Come on, watch those cattle there. Come on. Where do you think you're going? I'm coming with you. With that? You know, an awful lot of hunters get into trouble using rifles of too small a caliber. You'd better get back to camp. Mind if I come along? Well, at least your rifle's big enough. Come on. Hold it. Yeah, just a minute, you might be in trouble. Sure, oh, come on. You see that patch of bush? There should be some game behind it. You've got 200 yards up there, and I'll meet you on the other side. All right, Jim. Just a few scratches. I was lucky. So am I. I promised your wife I'd look after you. <laughs> Looks as though you need two pairs of eyes in this game. Oh, you're learning. Hey, Jim. Need some more meat for the camp. That's right. You go and get it. We seem to be making pretty good progress. We should be across the frontier in a couple of days. Do you have any misgivings? No, why should I? Well, there must be things you left behind. Some people. A few people, not many things. And you? <laughs> a seat at a bar. You know, there's a custom in Mombasa. When you've been a hunter for five years, you get your name engraved on a brass plate. They fix that brass plate to your favorite stool in your favorite bar. And for always after that, that stool is yours. You know, for a great many hunters, that's the nearest thing they know to home. Doesn't seem very much like home to me. Oh, it's not a bad system. At least people know where to find you, and it cuts down the overheads. I can't imagine people living like that. We haven't got much in common, have we? No, I suppose we haven't. I live as best I can. 
The hunter out here is unlike any other white man. The best he can hope to do is make his pile before he's too old for the game. And he's not too particular how he does it. Why do you say that? Because it's true. Maybe when this country grows up, they'll breed a different race of hunters. But right now, it's not a very honest profession. I'm sorry if I shock you. No, I think I've got a little of my aunt's character, but none of her prejudices. That must make you a very remarkable person. I'm not in the least remarkable. I disagree. Do you? You'd better get back. There'll be things here to do. Hey, Jim, come here. Better take the head of the convoy today. This is the third day in succession. I know. It's only for the morning. I'll be all right in a couple of hours. Well, you better be careful. Somebody's going to get suspicious. The old woman's already so. Yeah. What of it? She can't send us back, can she? No, I wouldn't be too sure about that. That could be a good fellow. Take the head of the convoy, huh? What do? Back my bed roll, will you? He got away. I've seen people do some pretty stupid things in my time. You think my brother and I have enough to do without looking after you? I can look after myself. Can you? Maybe you've forgotten. We're trying to cross the Majubo River. It happens to be important. You ain't just a passenger in this trip. The least you can do is to stop causing trouble. Especially for Jim. I mean, it was all clear? No. You know what I mean. Stay away from my brother. Come on, let's get going. Come on, I've been saving that. What happened? Fever up Mohindi way. My partner died a week ago. How long have you been walking? Five days. 
I'm a Hindu, did you say? That's right. I'm a prospector. My name's Seth. Meacham. Where are you heading? Across the border. I imagine you could do with a hot meal. Marto! Thank you, ma'am. Look, Mr. Meacham. My luck seems to be out. I've lost everything I had. Can you use an extra hand? It's only fair to tell you that we're going to cross the Majubo River. Majubo? That's all right. I shall be sending a wagon home with the hunters. You could go back with them. I'm very grateful to you. That's a good thing we came along. By the way, I passed a mob of elephant up the valley. They seemed rather restless. Just thought I'd warn you. You better go out and take a look. According to the terms of our contract, Mr. Dobson, Frontier Police. We're trying to get some information. Of course, I'll do anything I can. What's the trouble? There was a shooting at Frey up north the other day. We're looking for a man. We think he might have passed this way. And what happened? I'm not absolutely sure. We found three dead men, two of them shot, the other buried in the collapse shaft of a diamond mine. And the Hindu? Why do you ask? Where is diamond country? We reckon there were four of them in the camp. Three of them shot it out together. One survived and got away. Had the mine been worked? That's the odd thing. We found some diamonds. They were hidden near the shaft. Must be worth quite a fortune. I'm sorry we can't help you. There's no one here but ourselves and our hunters. I don't doubt it, sir. As a matter of fact, we'd have stopped you anyway. The Cajados have been making a bit of trouble on the other side of the frontier. They just got themselves a new chief, Omdomo. I don't imagine they'll trouble us. I wouldn't be too certain about that. This part of the frontier has a bad history. Come on, Lawrence. Good luck to you all. Mr. Seth, would you tell Marta to saddle my horse? I shall be riding out ahead for the rest of the day. I'll give a hand to him. Meet your mind curious. Why'd you do it? I believe fairly good judge of a man. Besides, we've only heard their version of the story. I prefer to wait and hear his. Aren't you taking the law into your own hands? I shall be doing that anyway, when I cross the frontier in a few hours. Incidentally, why didn't you give him up? Practical reasons. A man who can shoot as well as he can would be an asset in any situation. You mean Amdomo? Possibly. <laughs> Can you see anything? I wish I'd left you in Mombasa. What would I have done in Mombasa? Sat around, wondering where you were and what you were doing. I don't care if we have to face a thousand Kajadi tribesmen. I'm told they don't come in thousands. But like the Maasai. I 
about a game of chance, Mr. Seth. For what stakes? Why not diamonds? Is that me? Thought you might. Police had. Sorry to disappoint you. All I've got is my gun, eight bullets, and the clothes I stand in. Ever do any hunting? Some. Big game? Little. I'm sure I heard something move just then. Where, over by the trees? Yes. Oh, he's been there for over an hour. An old buff keeps getting our scent and losing it again. Can't make up his mind what to do. I wouldn't worry. No. If we're gonna get any trouble, we'll get it tomorrow in daylight. Why do you say that? Trouble's my business. Other people's? Yes, that's the thing about being a hunter. You lead other people's lives. You pick up a thread here and a thread there. Don't you get a little tired of that? Sometimes. I should have thought everybody wanted a life of their own. Very few hunters manage to achieve it. There's another wagon coming out in the spring. I if you wanted... Well, if you wanted to see how we got on, pick up the threads. Perhaps you don't. I could think of nothing in the world I'd want more. Ruth! Oh, there you are. We've got work to do. By the way, Mr. Dobson, have you any theory about these calls? Might be a bird, man. A bird? A bird with a spear in his hand, most likely. happier when we see that valley tomorrow. Did that sound like a bird to you? I'll feel happier when I know that we haven't led these people into a hornet's nest. Don't be a fool, you'll have them in among the wagons. Got to get back before the rains.
Fusato! Trying to get behind us.
Nothing. Uh, Mr. Seth, we've been talking about this river here. It's not one of the Mara tributaries. Do you think it runs into the Majuro? Very likely. I'd say we were pretty close. About 15 miles. Then we should get across tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. What precautions are you going to take? None. The moment we cross that river, the Marsai are going to be watching us. We don't want this to look like a military expedition. I suppose you know what you're doing. Oh, I think so. After all, they haven't fought a battle since the Shiloh Wars. Everybody who's been over there says they're living quietly in their villages. We couldn't have chosen a better time. That may be, but don't you think you're putting a lot of faith in the permanence of things out here? Might as well admit we can't afford any casualties. That's why we're going in unarmed. Try to see it this way. The Maasai is the most powerful tribe in Africa. The Kikuyu, the Kijados, the Jews, everyone respects them. If we could establish a foothold here and win their confidence, make a treaty with them if you like. The white man and the Maasai. We'd be like a hammer and an anvil together. We could forge something really lasting out of this country. Is there anything you want, Captain? No, oh, thank you, Tom. What's on your mind, Mr. Seth? I was thinking of what your brother said. Doesn't it make sense? The idea of anything in Africa making sense is a trifle new to me, ma'am. Just doesn't seem to be a sensible country. Perhaps you have good reason for saying that. You want to know if I killed those men, don't you? Did you? Yeah. In self-defense? Who can say? We started out to make a fortune. We were lucky for a while. And then? They got suspicious of one another. Got greedy and we quarreled. What are you going to do? I haven't the least idea. You don't have to go back, you know. Look, ma'am, I have a price on my head. What of it? We didn't argue about that when you took a spear out of my shoulder, when you led us across the desert. You're pretty handy, you know. Thank you, ma'am. They say you'll want to think about it. But don't forget, never heard a man to settle down. You must have some rest, Liz. Better come back to camp. I sure think it's the right time you addressed a couple of words to me. Just talk to Meacham. Heading back next week. Got to be next week, Jim, or the rains will beat us. What is it? Peter Johnson? We were hired to protect these people, not to lead them into ambushes. Nah, if we'd gone the other way, something else could have happened. The other way was the safe way. We both knew that. But you had to see Kayanga. Take the idea still appeals to you. Oh, well, I'll come back to Kayanga with you, just to see you don't get killed. I've carried you this far, I might as well carry you all the way. But as for the ivory, you can have it. All of it. You'd do anything to get your hands on it, wouldn't you? Absolutely anything. Crocs in that river. Huh? What do you want to go bathing at this time of night for? I've been doing a lot of thinking. 
since Peter was killed. We seem to be on different sides. I've decided it isn't any good, Bruce. Why? Your father and his ideas. Well, I tried to explain to you my kind of life that day at the other camp, remember? Yes, I remember. Well, what I was trying to say was... That you weren't good enough for me. Yes, that's true. Listening to your father tonight, I realized just how true it was. We don't see things the same way. We don't want the same things. But you've begun to see things in his way. It's a little late. But why? Because I've been a hunter for a long time. It's my life. I wouldn't want to change it. I like to be free. I'm not a farmer. I'm not a settler. I like to go my own way. Tomorrow, we cross the Majugo, then Paul and I'll go back. I'll hope when I've gone, you'll forget all about me. No. We must. Forget you ever heard the name of Dobson. Believe me, it isn't worth remembering. Quite right, Mr. Seth. It is the Majubo. The trouble is, how are we going to get across? Well, let's have a look. I'll have the boys cut down some trees and make a bridge. Oh, the wagons are too heavy. I can't take that risk. We'll have to look for a crossing. It might take weeks. Better than losing my wagons. I can get you across there in four or five hours. Mr. Dobson, I'm responsible here and I give orders. Would you take a party downstream? Very well. And you and your brother go upstream. If you don't find anything in three days, come back. Is that clear? I'll go and fill a water bottle. That's no use. We've been out here five days. How much longer do you want to go on? There isn't a crossing between here and Lake Victoria. A stinking river. Come on, let's get back. Rains are nearly here. It's going to be too late, Jim. After all this, we're going to be too late. Victoria. What happened here? I found a Ford three days ago and Meacham's gone over with the wagon. Congratulations. Your luck seems to be changing. My luck? By rights, you ought to be swinging at the end of a rope. What's that got to do with it? Just a reminder. If you'd come back when you were told, you'd have saved a lot of boot leather. No use blaming me for it. Since when did you start giving orders around here? I'm not giving orders. And it seems odd that you should walk a hundred miles looking for a Ford. What I do is my own business. Mr. Dobson, I'm beginning to wonder what your business is. 
Let's forget it, shall we? Put that away. Put it away. back in time. I'm beginning to wonder if we're going to get back at all. Blood Mountain. What? That must be Blood Mountain. Sacred burial place of the Maasai. I've heard about it. You mustn't go there, Mr. Meacham. For one thing, your boys will refuse to follow you. Well, I won't ask them to. It's on those plains that we're going to build our settlement. We're going to grow crops there. More crops than they've ever seen. They must have seen us by now. I suppose something will happen sooner or later. What did he say? He wants to know what we're doing here in the Valley of Blood Mountain. He wants to till the land here to grow pasture for our cattle. Wana hapa. Sawika wahu. Apatu. Karigas. Mwacham den munyan den. Karigas. Neni chingwa. Wants to know what magic we bring. Tell him we bring no magic. Only goodwill towards his people. Wana nakunu. Awakana ki. Which doctor says it's all a trick that we've really come to make war? If we came to make war, why have we brought our women? See the one a tango wahu? That waka we ho? That means up. He says that many white men will come. When you're strong enough, you'll rise up and defeat the Maasai. Tell the chief I'll make a bargain with him. If at any time any of us do harm to his people, then let him listen to his witch doctor. Until then, let him be wise and listen to me. Sigawana hafa anwahu. Awawa. Achinga hapa. 
Abana, Nasika, the what we hear, so. He's a Runajum Bridon, you know. Give him much in Najum Bedu. If you really young, it should carry it, it should carry it, Rajum Bidon. You know what I will make a game, what I will make a game, what I will make a game. Ask him this Who's the chief of the Maasai? He or his witch doctor? What did Akura know? Ukura, Urukura. Martin Alegra, I will need to see things in Mugmachi to be good on it. He is chief, and he will accept your word. Going to his village to bring gifts. Come here. Who are you? I'm going to go to the village. 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 You mind finishing up here? Come on, Jim. See you later. All right. Your brother has been out a long time. Well, you know what these ceremonies are. He'll be back soon. Minding for hours just looking at it. Couldn't believe it. It's, it's in crazy, impossible. So, realize what this means, Meacham? It's the Rand. It's the Rand all over again. I made a promise to Maguana this afternoon. What's that got to do with it? I don't mean to break my word. You can't stop this now. Try to think a minute. Try to see my point of view. You have no point of view. You may think you're writing the history of Africa, Meacham, but you're not. It's things like this that make history. Not idiotic promises that no one can keep. I have every intention of keeping mine. Oh, how? Oh. Ah, so that's it. The frontier is 250 miles away. You have no wagon and no supplies. You're bluffing. Just try and yoke up those oxen and see. You mean you'd kill me? Yes, why not? Oh! No. He'll never get back alone. This isn't gold, it's mica. Fool's gold. He's gone to Blood Mountain. I am your friend, the others have lied to you. Their promises are empty. Soon there will be many of them. Your witch doctor was right. They haven't come to farm, they've come for gold. They'll overrun your land, steal your cattle, drive them from your country. They have no weapons. Attack them now before it's too late, before the white man overruns you. I will help you. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Come to know not to make him wear. Well, I'm not telling you. Well, I'm not telling you. Well, I'm not telling you. Well, I'm not Don't be foolish, Catherine. We have a much better idea. Are you sure you don't want me to go out, Jim? This is my responsibility. I want you to know that everything that's happened on this trip has been our fault. My brother's and mine, even what happened to Peter. You altered your route because my brother said there was cattle plague. There was no cattle plague. Warriors to die? Your chief. Only you can judge us. Morning, Jim. Don't get in my 